In the last video, we talked about three kinds of curves. We talked about graphs of functions, like if you have f of x equals x squared, you draw y equals x squared and get a parabola. We talked about level sets of functions of two variables. If you take f of x, y is x squared plus y squared, and you set that equal to a number, you get a circle. And we talked about parameterized curves. A parameterized curve is where you both where you specify x as a function of time and y as a function of time. And, it, and you, you've described not only the curve, but your trajectory along the curve. Where are you along the curve at each moment in time? What we're going to do now is we're going to look at one of the most important examples of a parameterized curve called a cycloid. And this is going to be a running example throughout much of our development of the material of curves in the plane. So let's suppose we've got a bicycle. This is supposed to be the back end of a bicycle. The bicycle is, is riding along, the bicyclist is riding along at night, and he has put a light right at the rim. And so you, you can see him. He's very safety conscious, always wears a helmet, and he has the, uh, the flashing red light on the rim. And you see him bike by, and it's dark, so you don't see him very much, but you sure see the light. And you see the light going in a funny trajectory, and the light tracks a trajectory that looks kind of like this. It goes up and down, I mean, generally moves to the right, but it goes up and down and up and down as the bicycle wheel turns and turns and turns. The question is, how can we describe this curve? We want to figure out the, the formula for this curve, and we can't do it as a y equals f of x curve, and we're not going to do it as a level set of a function of x and y. We're going to figure out the trajectory as a parameterized curve. So let's take a look at the at the starting position. So we start off with our tire, which I'm going to redraw as a circle. Well, sort of a circle, I can't draw. And it's got a certain radius, and in fact, if you have a standard bicycle tire, the radius is going to be 13 inches, 26 uh, inch diameter wheel. But whatever. And you have this point at the bottom. Okay, that's where you start. You're starting off at the origin. So this is the situation at time zero. The question is, what does the situation look like at time t later? And let's suppose that the bicycle is rotating at a rate of one radian per second. So a little while later, our wheel Uh, our, our bicycle wheel has moved forwards, and the whole thing has rotated by t radians. It's going uh, to the right, so it's going clockwise. And it's rolled forwards. And the amount that it's rolled forwards is a distance t times r, because it started off with this spot. This is the, this is the reflector, with that spot at the origin. And the distance it's rolled is the radius times the angle that it's rolled. So this point, point here is tr, comma, 0. And then if you go up here, so this is the point tr, comma, 0. This is the point tr, comma, r. And then we have to figure out where this point is. So that's a bit of trigonometry. Let me draw the triangle a little bit bigger. I'm going to draw it over here. So our angle is t, and our distance is r. So this must be r sine of t, and this must be r cosine of t. So we start off. So one of the key principles of doing things with multiple variables is to do them one variable at a time. So let's look at what is the equation for x, and then we'll look at the equation for y. For x, we start off at x equals tr, 
but then we step backwards a distance minus r sine of t. So this is going to be r times t minus sine of t. If we want to know what is y as a function of time, let's see, it's height r minus this distance here. So it's r minus r cosine of t. So this gives us r times 1 minus cosine of t. You put that all together, and you get the equations for a cycloid. So the equations for a cycloid is that x as a function of time is r times t minus the sine of t. y as a function of time is r times 1 minus the cosine of t. And if you plug in a bunch of numbers, you wind up getting the kind of curve that I told you about earlier. When t equals 0, you're at the origin. When t equals pi, you're at the top of the arc. The, the bicycle wheel has rotated halfway around, so you're all the way at the top. And if it's halfway around, then you've gone a distance pi r. And then it comes back down. And then it repeats. So you will have some, some computer models in the remainder of the learning module where you get to play with this and see the graph more, much more accurately than I could possibly graph by hand.